Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of my image processing. This time we're going to go and look at Frangie filter. And for you guys that do not know what Frangie filter is, it is a way to see tubular structures in an image. And why do we want to know that? In the previous video, we watched Harris corner detection algorithm that detects edges and corners and flat areas in an image. But we would like to know more about the image and maybe see different structures. For example, in an MRI scan, if you want an implant, for example, you would like to see the blood vessels which might be weakened and better ones to know exactly how to plan your surgery. And then you need to know the tubular structures to be able to identify the vessels from other components that you can see in the MRI scan. Let's get started with the Frangie filter. So what can we use it for? As I said before, it is to find tubular structures. So in the last video we talked about highlighting different kind of edges and if we for example want to find the tubular structures in an MRI image, so we want to find the vessels, we want to be able to distinguish tubular structures and not just highlight different kind of edges because that will be a very messy image. So how do we do this? We look at the second order local structure of the image. That's why we will use an, a Hessian matrix for this. Okay, so what is a Hessian matrix? It is the second partial derivative of the image function, right? So we will be able to find the different directions of the second order structures. That means that we will be able to understand how the shape are in the image. And if, for example, there are long tubular structures, or for example, if we find a big circle or ball in our image, it will help us distinguish the different shapes that we can find in our image. Okay, so let's see the function that we are working with today. When we do not find a tubular structure, we're going to get back a zero. Otherwise, we will get back a number that indicates how likely it is that this is a tubular structure that we have found in our image. And we will go through RA, RB and S later. And alpha, beta and C, they are basically constants uh, that you also use to adjust the sensitivity. And in the paper, they use the value around 0 0.5. What is S? If you guys remember in the previous videos, we talked about the Gaussian curve, right? that it looked like a bell curve. And the second order uh, derivative of a Gaussian kernel like this is looking a bit different. Okay. So this part here is actually 2s wide. So it goes from minus s to s. It shows the inside and outside contrast for example, in an MR image, MRI image, we will have a dark background and then our vessels will be white, right? And depending on how big this S is that we have defined, we will be able to go through with this kind of kernel 
and see where it is matching in the image, where there are this contrast of inside and outside. And this range defines how big vessels we will find. That's why you can do the frangi filters with different S after each other to be able to find all the different kind of um, vessel sizes. But you don't want to go too low because then you'll be able to get all this different noise in the image. But okay, let's now look at one of the more tubular structures. Let's say that this is what we want to find in the image. So we do an eigenvalue decomposition that will extract the three orthonormal directions when we are mapping from the Hessian matrix. So that will actually give us when we found the tubular structures, it will find the different directions of the structure. It will give us the shortest length and the longest one as well. Okay, so <clears throat> this is why we're using the Hessian to get these values out from the second order local structure of this vessel. And we can get out the eigenvalues from that. Maybe I should use another color for that. And we will call them lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. So lambda 1 is basically 1 divided on the square of A2. Lambda 2 is divided on 1 over B squared. And lambda 3 is the same as 1 over c squared. And this is basically the most important information that we gain. And this will help us find if um, it's more of a vessel or a blob or a plate. It would give us the idea if this actually is a vessel. So the ideal structure is that absolute value of lambda 1 should be almost equal to 0. We want it to be as small as possible because we divide on A and we want A to be big, right? So we want lambda 1 to be really small because a tubular structure is long on this axis and then it's round here between B and C. So we want B and C to be rather similar to each other, so they form a circle here and then A elongate, right? So we want uh, lambda 2 to be almost equal to lambda 3, right? And what we also want is that lambda 1 is much smaller than lambda 2 because that means that the difference between this length and this length is big, right? And that's what we want. So we want that lambda 1 is much smaller than lambda 2, right? You could have written lambda 3 here as well because they're basically the same size. So much smaller than lambda 2 or lambda 3. So this is the most interesting part when we have lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3 and we look at the different values. For example, if lambda 1 and lambda 2 have low values and lambda 3 has a high but negative value, we know that it is a plate structure and that it is bright. Because when we have that lambda 1 is big, no, no sorry, <laughs> when we have that lambda 1 is uh, a low value, we know that A is big. We also know that B is big, but we have a very low uh, 3. So it's basically like a pancake that we have. A thick pancake, basically. And if it's just the opposite sign, we know that it's dark. And that's where it's interesting if you have pre-knowledge of what you're looking for, because then this can be interesting. Then we know in our 
MRI, for example, in normal MRI images, the background is usually dark and then the structures that are prominent are lighter. So that's why we can use that to our advantage. And if you know that the turbulent structure that you're looking for has a specific color compared to the background, for example, if it's dark on white, white on dark, you can also use that to your advantage. This is the perfect structure for me in an MRI scan. We have a very big A and we have very small negative values on two and three. So we know that it is basically a tubular structure or a dark one if that's what we're interested in. And here, when all of them are basically the same size, you know, that would be a spherical object, right? It has the same size in all the different dimensions. And it's the same here, negative, bright, positive, dark. So it depends on what you're looking for. So now it's time to reveal RA and RB. The values here will reveal if we, for example, have a deviation from a line and a plate, and here, for example, if it's more a blob-like structure or not. We use all of these features into the probability-like estimation of the vessel likeliness, right? Depending on the different criteria here that we have established the size, if it's um, the blob structure or if it's the line or plate structure. So we combine these criteria, right? To ensure that the response we get after applying this filter will be as maximal as possible if we have a perfect vessel or a tubular structure that we, we have found. Okay, so the only thing that you have to do with this filter is that you have to define the different kind of S, the size of the tubular structures that you want to find. You do not want to have too small S because that will give you all of this clutter in the background. But if you do have a noisy image, then go back to my previous videos to be able to understand how you can clear that out by different filter options that make you have a more noisy less and a smooth image. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you will see when I release the next video in the image processing series.